Zambia's motto a few years ago was, uh, was Zambia in the sun. And if there's one thing that you can rely on in Zambia, it's that it's going to be a sunny day. So it makes so much sense to harness the power from the sun. When I grew up, we had something called power cuts. And even into my adult years, we had power cuts. But on the 22nd of June, 2015, suddenly this new word called load shedding uh, was, was invented. And that's when you have no power for more than two hours of the day. And in Zambia, at the moment, we can have no power for even up to 12 hours. I mean, sometimes we've gone through no power for, for three days even. And how do you live without, without power from the grid? Um, so six years ago, when load shedding happened in Zambia, we were renovating our farmhouse. And I said, OK, we're doing a sustainable housing development. We're going off the grid. And so I lived off of the grid for three years and I really learned a lot about living with solar. Um, and and um, finally, when we did connect to the grid, I, I'll be honest, I did um, our national grid, it's called Zesco. And I did a little bit of a Zesco dance on the day that we finally connected because um, I just I'd learned I had learned a lot. Um, so I really believe in hybrid homes working both with the grid and with solar. Uh, I recommend that you put all of your inductive loads, so anything that has a wattage of over 500 watts, put that on, your, on the grid, and anything that's below 500 watts, which is a non-inductive load, put that on solar, and that works really well. So in the house that I live in now, uh, which is a full-spec greenhouse, we've put all of the loads which are less than 500 watts, and all essential loads on solar. So uh, that's all the lights, ceiling fans, the TV, the fridge as well. I consider the fridge to be an essential load because you don't want to lose your perishables and now fridges are really energy efficient. Also any uh, cell phone charging, laptop charging, if you've got a music, sis uh, a sound system and you need to charge that easily, no problem, charge it on, on your solar, all essential loads. Anything that has an element which is um, which is inductive load, put that, put that on your grid. Um, so things that have uh, that are high, have a high wattage, that's like your, your washing machine, your dishwashing machine, your kettle, your toaster, um, uh, anything that has, you know, has an element. I think a, a good way to think about what, is, what has an inductive load is I think about a kettle. So, so when you switch your kettle on uh, and you hear that sound, it's, lit, it's your kettle drawing a huge amount of power out of the grid to heat up water in a very short period of time. Uh, a kettle has about 2,500 watts, for example. So that make sure that that's on your grid. Um, and then the way we've designed our electricals and from the learnings that I've had of, over the years, we then we separate our streams. So we put uh, from the distribution board, we, we have a section for our solar MCBs and below, this, below that we then have a section for our Zesco MCBs and we run our electricity lines in parallel. I find it's cheaper to do that, to, just, to get it right from the onset rather than later on in time you start adding lines and it, all, it can become a little bit of a, you know, a spaghetti mess with, with electrical. So I think do it right from the onset. So I remember when we lived in the farmhouse um, we, we, so we got a company to come up from South Africa. This is six years ago when, when all of us in Zambia were very new to solar. I think at the moment, six years later, everyone in Zambia, we're all experts on, on solar. But we got a company to, from, up from South Africa. They installed our solar system. I gave them all our loads from the washing machine, like literally down to every little, little detail. And we were told from the, from the onset that you can, you can run everything on, on, on solar. Um, we, we installed it, we were super excited, and then about we ran everything off of, off of the solar. We had an electric oven, we had a gas stove, an electric oven, washing machine, dishwashing machine, all your modern appliances, uh, uh, ceiling fans, we ran, ran it all on, on the solar. It ran beautifully for six months, and then after six months, we had power during the day from sort of six, seven o'clock in the morning till about 6 p.m. in the evening, and then we were, we were in darkness in the evening. The batteries had, had run dry. 
I, you know, I called up the company and said, what's going on? And they said, well, if, uh, do you have an electric oven that's about 3,500 3, watts? And uh, is that on your solar system? I said, yes, we do. Do you have a washing machine? Do you have a dishwashing machine? Are you mowing your lawn on the solar? And we were doing all of those things. And unfortunately, we learned a very expensive lesson. So that, but those batteries did cost us about $4,000. And, and, um, and we had run them flat. Um, so, so from that huge expensive learning curve, that's also the reason why I recommend, I, I just try to play it safe. Uh, I, I think it's, um, you know, it's, 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 it's cheaper to, to play it safe than to, than to sort of put uh, everything on, on, on your solar. And, and also in our modern um, households now, we do have washing machines and dishwashing machines and they are very convenient. They can make our life uh, a, lot, a lot easier. So, you know, put those things in, but, but put those on your, on your Zesco. Um, but that's what then got me thinking about then separating the streams and putting um, you know, some items on Zesco, some items on solar, and, and then and labeling all of your socket outlets. So we do label our socket outlets um, and, and, make and make sure that we also do some training with our staff as well, that they also understand that anything that is up over 500 watts, uh, you know, it, when you see the, the kettle on the Zesco socket outlet, don't go moving that kettle around onto other socket outlets, uh, leave it where it is. So, so when we lived in the farmhouse and when we noticed that our batteries weren't going through the night, I, I do remember my husband coming home at sort of 6 p.m. We still had some, some power in the batteries and he loves his bread and cheese and he would uh, put some bread in the toaster and as soon as that ping sound uh, pop happened and uh, the bread popped out of the toaster, we were in darkness for the rest of the night and literally the power that was still left in the in the in the batteries which probably would have kept us till maybe even sort of 10 o'clock and we could have had a nice a nice evening all that power was drained in literally one minute or 30 seconds of um, of the toaster being on and that's also when I realized just how much power that kettle um, or oh, sorry that that the toaster draws um, in such a short a space of time a lot of people have asked me, in the month of October, for example, it, it can get very warm, incredibly beautifully warm in Zambia. It will go up to that lovely 35 degrees, um, clear skies. And they say, well, you know, can't I run my washing machine on solar? And, and can't I mow my, my lawn on solar? And you absolutely can. Um, but it's all just about how you manage your loads. So generally, even on a day like today, which is quite sunny, but there's a few clouds, you can uh, you will have your maximum amount of power from about 11 o'clock in the morning till about 2 p.m. in the afternoon and during that period of time you you are probably generating an excess of power so if you are in your home and you're managing your system very well you can you can what you put your washing machine on um, and 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 do other things but ideally you don't if you are running some of those inductive loads on your solar system you don't want to be put, doing them all at the same time so don't put your washing machine your dishwashing machine mow your lawn and iron all at the same time otherwise yes you're most likely draining your batteries but during that peak hour 11 o'clock to, to 2 p.m. in the afternoon if you do want to run a washing machine but sort of one one appliance maximum of two appliances so a washing machine maybe with ironing at the same time and if you know that it's October and it's really really hot then absolutely you can do that also with ironing um, you can get different types of irons because I also consider ironing to be um, somewhat of an essential load. In Zambia we have putsy flies so we do iron all of our clothes. Um, so I've looked into that because often we can have power cuts for up to 12 hours a day and then you'll have clothes piling up uh, because I've you know, said no ironing when it's, uh, when it's um, you know, that, that we should only do ironing on, on Zesco. So I've, with the specifically for ironing, um, I have two irons, one iron, which is a 2,500 watt iron, um, which gets a lot hotter and you can iron faster on it. But then I also have another iron and that iron is a thousand watts. Um, so I've chosen that on a, uh, if um, if we don't have power from the grid, we will still uh, carry out uh, some ironing, uh, but but on but only using the iron, which is which is a thousand watts. 
So our solar system in the house that we live in now is, um, it was installed by Timbuktu. We've been really happy with them. We have 18 solar panels on our roof and we have 12 batteries inside our, our, little, our battery bank room. Um, our system is a 12 kVA solar system. On maintenance of your solar system, during the rainy season, in Zambia we have a rainy season from November to, to, to March. During your rainy season you don't need to go up and clean your panels because you've got rain every couple of days um, uh, washing over your panels and keeping them nice and clean. But once you're into the dry season, it's important to go up onto your roof um, ideally about once a month. Uh, take a squeegee that uh, looks like a, a tea bar it, uh, with, uh, with a sponge on one side and a rubber on the other side. You'll have used them at petrol stations to, to clean your, um, your windscreen. Take one of those and you can go up with a knapsack as well. Uh, put some water in your knapsack or on your back and spray down your panels and take your squeegee uh, to just um, to, to clean off that water um, and dry out dry that water down with uh, with the rubber side of your of your squeegee um, you want to make sure that your solar system is running efficiently so even just that layer of dust that will accumulate on your solar panels will reduce the amount of pb power which is penetrating your batteries